When can we get Boss Lady out of the attic? <laughs> it's usually halfway through the week. So here she is. Your host. Your host of Halfway Through the Week. Deb LaMotta. Okay, you can applaud now. And I am Deb LaMotta, and this is Halfway Through the Week. It is February 13th, Wednesday, and it's 59 degrees. It was a beautiful, sunny day here. And I can't tell you that I am so happy that it is halfway through the week. It's been a week for me, um, but I made it. I'm here. And we, <laughs> I'm going to make it to the weekend. Oh, so I've got a great show tonight. I am so excited with the great music I have. And my special guest, C. Stevens of Asphalt Jungle. Um, I can't believe that we're here for the, it's, it's the night. We've been talking about this for weeks and, uh, I can't wait to uh, talk to C. Stevens and, um, and share everything that he has to share with you. There's lots going on, so stay tuned for that. Uh, what else do I have going on? I've got some great interviews coming up for uh, the um, R2RB Indie Artist Spotlight podcast. And I have some great women entrepreneurs also uh, coming up in the studio uh, to record. So it's that, it's, it's busy. I'm busy. I love what I do. I do what I love. I have a t- daytime job. <laughs> trying to get rid of it. <laughs> I need to hit the lotto. Oh my gosh. Did anybody hit the, hit the big one? Um, I should check that out. It wasn't me because you got to buy, you know, you got to buy the ticket in order to win. And I haven't bought the ticket. So I, you know, there's that. <laughs> hey, and it, has anybody hit on any of the scratch offs or, you know, any of the other lottos? Um, I did once. I did many, many, many years ago. I hit for uh, $10,000, which, of course, once the taxes get t- are taken out of that, it dwindles very quickly. But it was fun. It was fun sitting, listening to the numbers and getting down to that last one and thinking, oh, my God, I could possibly win. And sure enough, I... <laughs> That was kind of fun. So, yeah, have you won? Let me know. You can you can text me tonight at 302-272-5389. What's going on at R2RB? Well, I have been talking about our new members, that family members that have joined us, uh, Dance the Night Away with DJ Nordique, who is on um, Saturdays, Mondays, and Thursdays. So check him out. You can find him on the schedule at the r2rb.com website under the schedules. Uh, we have some others joining us this month as well. And of course, we have our um, our resident uh, DJs and podcasters. Uh, we have DJ Ron K, DJ Sister Love, DJ Coco Motion. Uh, we have Ginger and Nut Show from across the pond. We have the best of Irish Indie with P Mad, Paul Dillon. We have... Um, we have friends versus friends. Um, you love basketball? Check these guys out. It's a great, great show that they have. Um, they record, they do live on Friday and then we get to share it all weekend with everybody. So, uh, check that out. And we've got some other things going on. And of course, I'm enjoying doing these interviews with these awesome indie artists. Uh, I was speaking to, uh, Alicia, um, from Alicia Maxwell project band. And I, I said, I just, it's amazing that I started following one, one group and here I am almost a year later. And I have talked to some awesome, um, indie artists. I gotten to interview them, uh, you know, get to go listen to them live and I get to share it all with you. So that's, you know, life is good. Like I said, I just need to get rid of this day, day job. So if anybody has any suggestions <laughs> or you've got that winning, do you have that winning combo <laughs> number for the lottery? <laughs> share it with us. Come on, share it. Um, uh, what else? Okay, just let me get all the things out of the way so we can get on to some good music. Uh, R2, Second Chance Ranch. Second Chance Ranch in Felton, as you always hear me say, I do volunteer at Second Chance Ranch. It's a horse rescue. Uh, Kara and Christian Sabo own the, the rescue. Uh, they are, oh my goodness gracious, um, they have such energy and do such a not 
an awesome job. Uh, we are fundraising for an, our next project, which will be six runs, uh, so that we can bring in some more rescues. And of course, with that, there's always a budget that needs to be covered. And for this project, we are looking for $3,000. So if you have a chance, uh, if you go to 2CRDE.org, you can donate there, or you can find the fundraiser at Second Chance Ranch uh, on Facebook, and I will be posting it on the R2RV uh, Facebook page as well. So I don't ask for much, but if you have a chance, either there or the my birthday fundraiser, which will be coming up. So there's that, people. There is that, and it's a big one. So help me celebrate my 65th birthday next month with... Uh, if you have a chance to donate to Second Chance Ranch, I'd appreciate it. All right, let me get some music going. Enough of the talk, and we got some good stuff going on. All right, don't go anywhere, because Ash, uh, Asphalt Jungle is coming up uh, uh, at about 8.30. You do not want to miss that. I'll be back. Way too many times now Start to feel regular And then up on this side of town now Never gonna give up on myself Gotta get yourself to This is C. Stevens of Asphalt Jungle, and you're listening to R2RB.com. That's right, R2RB.com. Real to real broadcasting, always on. I'm Deb Lamata. This is halfway through the week. It is Wednesday. It is March 13th. It is 8.08, and it is 59 degrees here in Delaware. I just wanted to come back real quick. I, I I promise I have a lot of great music, but there is a fellow indie artist out there. I know that so many of you follow him, Sintel. Um, and so I just posted the link on, my, on the R2RB broadcasting page for a GoFundMe for his mom. If you could go find that link, I'll do some more posting uh, and some more information uh, later on this evening or tomorrow. But you guys, uh, and I've said this so many times, that the indie artist uh, community is so supportive of each other. And, and so um, there, there is somebody who, who, who needs a little help. And if you could uh, find me, find uh, R2RB on the Facebook page, you all who, who all of you that follow me, if you could go and uh, do uh, something for Sintel. Uh, the, he, he has taken a, a break from social media. Um, when he's on, he's a gospel singer, songwriter, awesome guy, uh, just, just, uh, just a genuine nice guy. And, uh, 
always has an encouraging word. Um, you know, before he took his break, you could always find, um, you know, an, er, encouraging words every day from him. And I've told him this before as well, that there was a couple of days that, as we all do, I was having, you know, not such a great day. And there was, he had posted something and it was like, it kind of turned it around for me. So go help a, a fellow indie artist. And as I said, it's on the R2RB Broadcasting Facebook page that I just shared with the GoFundMe. Um, and I, I'll share more on the Facebook page uh, later on this evening. If I can stay awake or uh, tomorrow. Uh, and again, Sintel, please go find him uh, or at least go find R2RB and the GoFundMe um, uh, a link. All right. I will be back. <laughs> Hey! 
This is Steve from The Word 66, and we are happy to be here on Real to Real Broadcasting, playing the best music from the best artists all around the world. Life's on repeat, yeah, just waiting for us I'll take today, I will, to write a different chorus I realize that this guitar has not gotten me very far But it helps me say what must be said I can't explain just how I feel And I don't understand what I think is real I got a song that must be sung instead. I got a song that must be sung instead. Listening to the waterfall, whispering because I know I'm so damn small. When the sky is yellow and the sun is brilliant and blue, I'm hoping I'm What must be said I can't explain just how I feel And I don't understand what I think is real I got a song that must be sung instead I got a song that must be sung instead Check out our new look. Come stay a while. Leave a comment at info at r2rb.com. All right, let me just backtrack here with who I played tonight. Opening was Killy Collette Weathered. If you have a chance, go find him on Facebook, Instagram, uh, at uh, Killy Collette. Uh, like him, comment, share him. Yeah, I'm working with him to get him on the show as well. You know, all our lives can go a little <laughs> left at times, right? Uh, but we're getting there. We'll get him on. I'm looking forward to to that. Uh, before that, or after that, Factory of Art, Story of Pain, out of Germany. Um, hope you like that one. And then, of course, Michael Bate, Bam, Michael Bate, with his musician's anthem, I Got a Song, which just released on March 1st. So uh, go find Michael Bate Band and Factory of Art and Killy Collette so far. Great music tonight, as always. And please, if you have a music you'd like to send to me, you can email at mp3 and bio2 info at r2rb.com. And that's how I get a lot of these great uh, artists on, on the show is by you uh, sending me your, your music. So continue, please. All right, we'll continue on.
bitch, I got something to get off my chest. Jack sitting by my side to address this inebriation is thinking to open up. I've got a knock in my shoe, making me bleed. I've got a nail in my eye, making me blind. A million other things to nag about. This is the end of the line for you. This is C. Stevens of Asphalt Jungle, and you're listening to Halfway Through the Week with your host, Deb LaMotta. That's right, and it is halfway through the week. That last song, End of the Line, Worm Rose, uh, they're out of Sweden, and oh my gosh, I really like like that one. Let me tell you, I'm actually really, really enjoying tonight's music that I picked out for you all, so I hope you're enjoying it as much as I am. (laughs) 
All right, I am going to spin one more. And while this song is spinning, I'm going to get, yes, it is time. We are there. We are going to be talking to Asphalt Jungle C. Stevens. I couldn't be more excited. I am. We've been talking about uh, this interview for uh, quite a few weeks. We're, I'm so excited that I've been able to play his song that's going to be released uh, Friday, finally. Uh, America, we're going to talk about that. I, and, I, and when we're done with the interview, we I will be spinning his new single. So everybody, don't go anywhere. Get something to drink. Get comfy because C. Stevens of Asphalt Jungle is going to be on the line. I'll be back. I'm Debbie Lamana, and this is Halfway Through the Week, and I am, as I said before, so excited to have C. Stevens of Asphalt Jungle. Let me just read to you real quick. A new wave of American hair metal. Asphalt Jungle is a modern, hard rock, non-touring studio band founded by C. Stevens. Asphalt Jungle has been coined as the new wave of American hair metal. C. Stevens, welcome to Halfway Through the Week. How the heck are you? I'm doing great, <laughs> especially since you, you played my boy at the top of the hour, good old Chili Collette. Oh my gosh, yeah, I, we we've been working. Um, he's got some things that you know, as we all, as I said earlier about going left, uh, and so he's just trying to get through it all. And, and I said, hey, dude, you know, just take your time and um, helping him put a bio together and get him on the show. So thank you for right. for sending him my way. So we. Uh, oh we, yeah, definitely. I love that song, Wretched. I do. Oh you know, my like, god. Uh, yeah, yeah. What, yeah. I, I love his raspy voice. I wish I had it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but you have such a you have such a unique voice. Never mind. What are you talking about? <laughs> uh, yeah, unique and flat. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, I don't think so. Oh my God. Oh man. Have I, you ever met a singer that likes their voice? <laughs> no. There. <laughs> no <Enough> said. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> what oh. you? Oh my gosh! 
So you and I, you know, talked for the first time last year with, uh, I put out on Facebook, you know, who wants to talk about, you know, indie artists and you and Michael Pate said, yeah, I will. <laughs> I will. Yeah. And so that's how we first connected. And uh, we've been keeping in contact since then. And um, so we, we have that. So, uh, you know, again, I'm glad you're back here and your new release, America. Oh my God. Yep. I have been playing that on the shows. Thank you so much for, uh, letting me share America with everybody before it's released. Well, thank you. I, and I got to say something about that. And I mean, you and, and a bunch of the others, you know, have been sharing it. And, um, I got to say, uh, Every time that sh- any of you guys, especially you, do a show and you play that song, I see a spike in YouTube. Yes. I see a spike on my website. I see a spike in uh, Spotify. That's awesome. And, and uh, Amazon. Yeah. So, yeah. It, it, like, I, I, I think you saw the post that I, I did. did the other day on yeah. Facebook. Uh, and I, I'm telling everybody out there listening that's an indie artist, this is the way to do it, guys, because. Uh, this works this gets out to the you know everyday listener you know uh, you know it's always been word of mouth uh you can think back to the 80s we used to do the thing called trading tapes remember that (laughs) i mean that's how metallica got signed for crying out loud trading tapes you know yeah so it's always been word of mouth it always has been and and you guys uh, do with this platform do that for us. You get us out there to the everyday uh, uh, music listener who is not going to be able to find us on Facebook. They won't be able to find us on Spotify because there's there like Michael said last week in his interview. There's tens and thousands of us releasing songs every day. Right. You know, so yeah. how are you going to find all this new music? You get it by word of mouth. Right. And you get it by you guys putting it out there, like I said, to the everyday listener. And it works. Well, it that, works tremendously. And that, and I think it was, you know, when I first started doing this, you know, it wasn't really, I hate to say it, really wasn't for the indie artists. And because I kind of turned this show into highlighting um, indie artists from Delaware and everywhere and across the pond, that's how this show has uh, come about. Um, and I had said, how can we help the indie artist? And that's exactly it. Being able to play your song and whomever songs that we can possibly put out there because it, it's a tough industry. It, it is. It, it really is. It's easy. It's easier now to get music out there. It's right. You know, but um, it's still hard because there's so many of us doing it. And it's so uh, being so easy to do it now. Right. The floodgates are open. Right. You know, so because, uh, you know, back in the day and, and showing both of our ages here, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you, you know, you put your band together, you, you practice, you write your songs, you go out there and you play these clubs and you didn't have the chance to go into the studio. It would cost you a couple thousand oh dollars God, to do yeah. something in the studio. It was crazy. You know, so so with the new, you know, with the stuff that's on the computers now. Yeah, now we get to do this. We, we 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 get to you know hone our craft and and we can go into the studio anytime we want to now. Right. You know, so that part is easier, but getting it getting it heard is still the hard part. Exactly. And that's why I love what you guys do. You guys are the the the, the queens and the kings of the music industry for us. Because without you guys, you know, we don't have a platform to put it on. We just don't. And I'm so happy to do it. And I get to talk to you and so, so many great artists out there. Um, and anything that we can do to help. I, I know I'm, I'm not just talking for myself. When, you know, if we're doing this, if, if it's somebody like me doing a show, radio, online or otherwise, we're doing it because we, we love doing, I didn't know I was going to love doing this, but I do. <laughs> <laughs> right. So. No, and, and I mean, we are we are so grateful for it. We really are. I mean, and, 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 and the cool thing is, is at the same time that we're doing this, engaging with all you guys that do all these shows, we get to find new music ourselves because we're still music lovers, too. Absolutely. Yeah. I, and I'll, I'll say this again, because Sintel, who I just mentioned earlier, right. had the, oh, yeah, I know, uh, me too. So he's, he's really, and his mom is a sweetheart. Um, so he had 
put a post. I said this last week about, you know, you, um, about genres and you can't just listen to one because you don't know what you're going to miss in all the other genres. And I have such an eclectic taste in music that he's right. I, I wouldn't, I'm thankfully, I love listening to everything that everybody sends me and then just listening to whatever might come across Spotify because I've listened to one song and they send, you know, whatever else comes up with it. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't, I don't think I would have, you know, entertained uh, heavy metal, hair metal, um, and everything else in between if I didn't just give it a little listen. Yeah, and, and you know, and it's funny because I, 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 when when people talk about that, I think back to an interview that um, uh, was done with Joe Elliott from Def Leppard, and uh, when they were, uh, it's actually the documentary about um, uh, them recording Hysteria, oh, God. and that, and he says then he goes, the coolest thing is that for a little bit of time we were the biggest band on earth, but at the same time, people that normally wouldn't listen to us were listening to us because they would have you know, a, uh, a Michael Jackson CD and right next to it was yeah. hysteria in right. collection. And that is so cool. And you it's know? so true. <laughs> yeah. And, and my, and actually my CD collection kind of looks like that, you know, I mean, everybody knows that I'm a huge hair band guy right. and all that stuff, but I've got all of Steve Winwood stuff. I've got, you know, wow. all, all this other stuff that I listen to wow. and I, I pull from it, you know, that is amazing. Um, but that has to do that has to do with my upbringing you know, with my parents, of course, you know. Right. So. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. So anything that we can do to help, um, we're always happy to do it. I'm, you know, definitely happy to do it. And I think I mentioned to you, um, you know, besides the shows now, then we're creating the playlist for the R2RB website. So that'll also, you know, get some playtime for everybody that has sent me music. I, I will, there'll be a Delaware indie playlist and then there'll be, um, everybody else playlist. So that's filling up fairly quickly. So, all right. We got to talk about you. We got to talk about America. We got to talk about all that. It's like, come on. Can you believe that uh, March 15th is like two days away? Come on. Tell us about America. Right. Oh, I I did not expect the uh, uh, the um, the response. I didn't. Not on. I really didn't. I didn't expect this. I'm uh, beside myself. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> so so it took two years to do that song. <laughs> did it? Well, let me ask you this: Why did you choose America? Was there a reason? I always like to know if there's a um, reason behind something. Well, um, I I'm I'm well the. I don't. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but um, at age four, um, there's two guys that I idolized, um, jumping up and down on the bed with a uh, a uh, tennis racket as a microphone or a guitar, and that was Tom Jones and Neil Diamond. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, my mom, she is, Neil Diamond's her guy. I can remember riding around in a '75 Grand Prix. With the eight track playing of Hot August Night. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, so Neil Diamond's huge in my thing. But I remember when um, when I, I first heard America, uh, you know, my dad went out and got the Neil Diamond the jazz singer soundtrack, and I remember hearing that song. And you know, I'm like what, ten, eleven, twelve years old, and uh, I just those thundering drums, and I was like, whoa! Back yeah. then, I had the vision of doing this song as a hard rock song that's crazy then. that's crazy yeah it, it took me 30 years to get there that's all right <laughs> <laughs> the best things take time <laughs> right <laughs> yeah it was just it's just the rolling drums the the the, the violins and all that stuff it, it, it just it was just one of those songs that stuck with me for so many years. I said, I got to do this song, but I got to do it my way, you know? Uh, and uh, I mean, there was two songs, actually. It was that one. And, uh, um, oh, what, it's, it's a Genesis song, Land of Confusion. Oh, wow. And I was really mad. I was really mad when Disturbed did it because that's the way I wanted to do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I was like, damn. <laughs> But no, so I got to do, I still got to do America, so. Oh my God, yeah. So I have been spinning that for the last, what, two weeks now? And five weeks. Five, is it, <laughs> where does time go? Oh my God, I have to be. So, so you know, I, I always, I always listen, listen to the songs that people send me and I'm listening to the beginning of that. I mean, I, I knew what it was and I'm like, I never know which way Asphalt Jungle is going to go with a song. 
<laughs> and you didn't disappoint. I, and so I and I listened to it first and just let it go. And then I always go back and listen to it a second time so I can really listen to it. And you just like nailed it. Like, Thanks. Yeah. And so two years in the making? Two years because, well, uh, I, I kind of had it musically down in, in a way, you know, I had bits of it done. And uh, I kept doing trying these vocal tracks and i didn't like it i didn't like what i was doing and uh because I, I i refuse to uh, use uh any vocal uh enhancing software okay. if it's flat it's flat right if i'm off key i'm off key i don't right. care okay. uh because that's i go for that live setting is what i go for when right. i record these songs right. so I, I wasn't happy i was not happy with it and um then finally just one day i was like i was in this studio messing around just playing around with some some other things that i was working on and i i heard my voice come back to me and i was like well that kind of sounds kind of cool doing it that way and i thought okay oh wait let's load america up and i loaded it up and then i just started belting it out wow. and what it was was i was trying to sound like not sound like neil diamond but i was trying to be like neil diamond i was trying to fr- do his vocal phrasing oh wow and that's what wasn't working i had to sing it like me and yeah. that's what I ended up doing. Oh, absolutely. I sang it like me. Oh, my God. So, yeah. And I, the funny thing is, is the, the, the song structure is not anything like the original. It's the very first time I've ever done a cover song where I, it's not a cover song. It, this is a remake, you know, because it's not in the same key. <clears throat> um, yeah. I have taken, I, I took a lot of the structure of it out uh, of what it does. And I rearranged it and flipped it upside down. Uh, how the chord progression goes and stuff like that, you know? So, and, and, and of course in the middle section there it, with the twin guitars, that's the, you know, that in, in the Neil Diamond version, that's going throughout it with the violins. Right. So, you know, yeah. So. Fantastic. Oh my God. And so, yeah. So March is here. March 15th is here. Oh my God. Yeah. Two more days. Oh, I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited. For, I am too, even though I've been playing it this whole time, but right. it'll be official. That is, uh, that's what I like. It, it will be official. Well, congratulations. Right. Cause that is just so Thanks. cool. I love, no, I, I really have been enjoying being a part of the releases. Michael, of course, as you know, was here. Uh, for his new right. release and with you and uh, I have some others as well. It's, it's fun. I love doing this with with a new release and the excitement and, and that's what it is all about for you guys. Yeah, it is. It, you know, it, it, it's, it's your baby, you yeah. know, and you put it out there and then when you do get some response back from it, it just, you know, it just gives you chills. It Absolutely. really does. It's great. Yeah. I mean, I can remember, I can remember when playing live, you know, because uh, I, I, I've been in, a lot of bands, but, um, I didn't, the beginning, uh, years, you know, the first like 10 years was all cover bands right. from then on. I no, we, I, I refused to be in a cover band. It was always originals. Nice. So the cool thing about that was hearing people, uh, sing your song back to you. Yeah. Absolutely. That is one of the most amazing <laughs> things can, in the world. And that is the biggest high ever. It really is. <laughs> That's crazy, I'm, but yeah, I can imagine because it's always good when you know I'm I'm in an audience and I know the songs are the word absolutely, so I know how right, that feels yeah, on my side. You're right, it's just <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I can't explain it. It's no. just a euphoric. Absolutely. It is. Oh my god, do you have musicians in your family? Uh yeah, my father. Oh. He's a really great guitar player too. Awesome. Yeah, uh, I I I was raised around music. There was music playing everywhere, whether it was in the house, in the car, yeah. <clears throat> whatever you know. Yeah. And it was eight tracks, you know. In the beginning, I, it was you know it it would be Deep Purple, Paul Revere and the Raiders, <laughs> Jan and oh Dean, God. the Beach Boys, uh, you know, the Beatles, and things like that. So oh, you know, uh, I, I uh, it was always there. I, yeah, and I had my eight tracks too, and on my vinyl collection. And man, could I I don't have my vinyl collection anymore i gave it to my ex-son-in-law and it's like oh can i have that back please uh, <laughs> right wanted... <laughs> right in the divorce i need those vinyl <laughs> records back <laughs> well, i i think you guys did talk about this last week didn't you you and michael how opening up the oh, the albums God. back then <gasps> and sitting there reading everything that was in there yes. that was like an, 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 an adventure <laughs> you was. know in it itself was. and oh, I, my you God. know what 
music listeners today, the young kids today, they, they, they miss out on that. They don't understand what that was like. No. You know. No, no. no. And you would stand I, in the record know. shop forever. Right. I, I spent all, you know, I was raised in Canada and I spent all oh, my wow. time at Sam's. There you go. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. All my time was spent at Sam's Records. All yeah. my time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's absolutely insane. Oh my gosh. Who's your biggest fan? My mother. No. Yep. She's a, she's my also my biggest critic. <laughs> She'll come back and go, you're really flat during this section. You need to redo that. <laughs> wow. There you go. Yeah. 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 Those she's... mom managers can be tough. <laughs> yeah. The funny thing is, is you know, my dad was in, like I said, the Paul Revere and the Raiders, the Beatles, uh, um, um, you know, uh, Buffalo Springfield, and of course, Deep Purple. Oh, my God. And my mom was the one who was into the heavier stuff. She loved Janis Joplin, Jimi oh, Hendrix, yeah. uh, you know, things like that. Oh so God, it was really? funny. Gr- yeah, growing up in the 80s when I started, you know, finding my own music, uh, I would pass my music on to her. So she became a Poison fan. She became a a Def Leppard fan because of me. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I don't know how I – because I listened to metal, too, and I was like – and I was trying to think back. I don't know who who was – who – Turn me on to to the metal. I mean, I wasn't really, you know, a big fan of it, but I I listened to all them, you know, absolutely. Right. And then come, you know, fast forward here, we're still talking about them. So there is that, right? You know, uh, yeah. My my hard rock and metal it, it, it steeped in the Deep Purple from my father. Oh man, yeah, yeah. Good that, that's where it started. It was Deep Purple, and then I then I I branched out and found my own my own idols and the, my own favorites and things like that. Exactly. When did you first pick up a guitar? Uh, age 10. And you remember, did you get it as a gift or did you go out and get it? No, yourself? Uh, no, my father got me, uh, the lessons and, uh, it, it, I can't remember the name of the guitar, but it's one of those ones that hurts your hands. Uh, but I, and now I know that it was made that way for a reason, but you know, and I just, I didn't, I, I, I quit because I didn't want to learn La Cucaracha. I'm sorry. I wanted to learn Stairway to Heaven. Oh, so, right. <laughs> if you're going to do it, you must so, do it right. <laughs> Right. So, you know, I, I tried, I stuck with it for, I think a month or two and I was like, I, I don't want to do this anymore. So I, I, I didn't. So fast forward four years later, I went out and, uh, I, I worked, you know, I was working my own, you know, after school job and stuff like that. Right, right. And I finally just said, I'm going to buy a guitar. And my dad was like, you're nuts. You're not, never going to stick with it. Well, here we are. Here we are. <laughs> Sorry, dad, but here I am. And so when did you know you wanted to be a do be a musician you wanted to really make it a part of your life and who you are like i said four years old when i was jumping up and down that bed trying to (laughs) yep trying to be like uh, tom jones and uh, neil diamond i have to go back to tom jones because when you first mentioned his name um i remember buying one of his new albums that came out um i was (laughs) i was at my grandmother's god bless her and looking at that album cover and looking at him and taking it out you know oh so carefully and putting it on the record player and making sure i didn't scratch it like oh my god that was crazy my my first record was bay city rollers (laughs) (laughs) i just lost a lot of fans just now (laughs) i have no comment my second one was the uh, Chipmunks Christmas. Oh, I had that one. <laughs> yep, the original from the 60s, yeah. That yeah one. That's the one I had. <laughs> <laughs> See, I listen to everything. <laughs> yeah, right? I have to. <laughs> Yeah, we had we had music going on in the house. Except my grandmother was Irish, so we had a lot of Irish music all the time. She was an awesome. She could sing. She had a beautiful voice and play the harmonica. She was pretty oh, cool. Oh wow! Yeah, she was cool. She, yeah. yeah, she taught herself. That was that was crazy. So let me ask you this question: Asphalt Jungle. What's the meaning, and or how did you come about with that name? It's my favorite. One of my all time favorite movies. Uh, film noir movie. Sterling Hayden, The Asphalt Jungle. Ah, oh, I don't know if I knew yeah. that. And if you did, I apologize uh, yeah. if I forgot. <laughs> yeah, and then, of course, I, I did, you know, the thing with the spelling of it differently, you know, yeah. and just kind of playing around with it to make it more like a rock band. But, um, yeah, my dad turned me on to that movie, that movie, and I just, the title grabbed me. And yeah. I was like, that'd be a great name for a band. There you go. And then, because... 
but then he's like, well, that has to, it, it has to fall to means New York. I was like, well, I'll just change it somehow. And I did. You did that. Yeah. Oh my God. I love that. Yep. Wow. And yep. oh my God. So you're a non-touring band for those of you that are listening. What's a, and don't know, cause I didn't really get it in the beginning. What's a non-touring band? Well, you know, I, Asphalt, I am Asphalt Jungle, so every instrument that you hear, I, I play in one form or another. That's uh, amazing. Every voc- yeah, every vocal is done by me. I, I, do, I do sometimes tend to use vocal harmonizers because you have to. Yeah, you know? okay. Yeah, sure. Uh, but, um, yeah, everything's done by me, so I can't tour because I'm the band. <laughs> <laughs> but on top of that, I don't really want it. I'm, you know, I'm going to be... 54 this year i don't want to tour anymore i'm too old for that plus i don't think anybody would want to go on the road with me because <laughs> i'm pretty when it comes to music i'm I, i'm pretty you know uh, i get the blinders on and when i get a vision i get a vision and it's like oh hell or high water <laughs> that's so, it you know. done oh my god yeah yeah so okay, well that's cool i think that's cool um and that you play so many different instruments and you have uh, learned all those i i do have a guitar i know three chords and that's all i've that's and i've taught myself those three chords so i'm proud of that so far (laughs) well you know sometimes three chords is all you need yeah okay (laughs) well no okay i'm going to give you an example and everybody out there is not going to know what we're talking about but that song i sent you the other day that's three chords oh my god okay all right (laughs) sometimes simplicity i like that i'll I'll learn those three chords and i can play with your song It's DCG. There you go. Oh my gosh! I happen to know one of those. <laughs> People think we're crazy tonight, but hey, you got to have some fun. And I, I don't know about you, but I've had one hell of a week. <laughs> yep. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah. Oh wow. So let me ask you this: How did COVID nineteen affect you? Did with the music? It since didn't. You, because you're non touring, it didn't. Well, no. I um. Believe it or not, I wasn't making music then. So um, I was actually, uh, I've been away from the music scene since 2014. So um, just certain dark areas, my life went down and, uh, you know, other things got in the way and uh, a writer's block on top of that, you know. So, um, yeah, so I had almost 10, well, not 10 years because. Uh, I started in 2021, uh, uh, right after the COVID was kind of uh, okay. you know, coming uh, to its tail end. Um, so I'm a Texas boy. I, I say I'm a Texas boy because I lived there for 22 years. Um, but then I got a uh, great job opportunity to move up to up outside of Chicago here in Illinois. And, of course, that's when I moved up here. And that's when I said, you know what, I'm, 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 I started – getting the urge to play again and, and, and do things. So, um, that I, I built the studio. I, I, I moved up here and I built the studio. In fact, I built the studio before I fully furnished my place. Well, <laughs> why am I not surprised? <laughs> right. I'm buying all these guitars, drum kit and everything else. And my mom and dad are going, did you get a bedroom set yet? No. <laughs> well, so don't you think it's time? <laughs> right. I'm sending them pictures of guitars and stuff. And they're like, when are you going to get a bedroom set? I'm like, I don't need a bedroom set right now. I got a couch. <laughs> what more do you need? You got your studio. That's what counts. Absolutely what counts. Right? That's crazy. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. Let me ask you this, because I think this is a um, a, a, a big thing right now. What obstacles are, are, you know, getting in the way of indie artists right now? Uh, or even just, you know, newcomers? Um. Okay, I'm I'm going to kind of go left field on this one. All right. Um, here's the thing I see with a lot of the indie people out there. Um, they're they're focusing too much on on Facebook and Facebook followers. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that is an obstacle. If you start only looking at trying to get the followers and the numbers up on Facebook, you're, in my opinion, this is just my opinion now, you're destined to somewhat kind of fail. Okay. I, this is. Um, I, Michael Bate is the reason I have what little, 
you know, success I have because I listened to what he had to say. And what he had to say is what we were talking about at the, at the top of this, this interview. Right. Get out there. You've got to get out there. You've got to network. You've got to, you, it's all about networking and yeah. it's word of mouth. Yeah. And uh, if you just focus on just Facebook and stuff, Again, it's not enough. It's not enough. You've got to get your brand out there. You need help, of course. Right. And Facebook can help. There's a lot of great groups out there Absolutely. that you can join. Uh, band Together is one of them, run by Christina uh, from Vox and Sticks. Oh my and God! She yeah. does an ama- amazing. Yeah, she does an amazing job. Um, you know, but that's not enough. Right. It's not enough because there again. Uh, Ten to twenty thousand people putting out music a day. Crazy, it, 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 you know. We're, it's all small fish out there. So, yeah. um, and I'm only talking from the aspect of a guy who does stuff out of a studio. Uh, you know, I don't know what it's like to tour nowadays. I don't know what it's like to try to get gigs, but it's probably still the same. I'm sure. Probably hard. Yeah, absolutely. No, and I'm so glad you said that because um, I talk. With I talk with my partner Ron about you know Facebook and R two R B and it's like okay we have more we have more followers but what can we offer everybody that's going to help just not me going on to Facebook I mean it certainly helps with what you know with the show and everything um, but yeah you definitely have to get out there no matter what you're doing and like you said network reach out to other people off of Facebook um, yeah, whatever else the hero. Can- the heroes on Facebook are, you know, guys like you, okay, that have these podcast radio shows and some of the independent radio stations that actually do that. And the uh, ones that dedicate their time to putting together those Spotify playlists and right. then they share them on Facebook. Yeah. Those are the heroes on Facebook. Those are the people that you want to network with. People like, you know, you <laughs> and, and, and all those other, you know, uh, radio uh, you know, podcasts around the world. Uh, that they're doing online like this, and right. and again, and and cultivate um, a a relationship with these people, and and, and the people that do these playlists. That's all they do, you know. They're, they're, that's that's the name of their their right. handle. Yeah. Is, you know, something something podcast or something something playlist. playlist yeah. Cult, yeah. Cultivate uh, uh, a relationship with those people, and that's the way to start networking and get getting the word out there. Exactly. And I'm glad that I'm glad that does help. And I'm glad that it is helping. And, you know, every chance I get, it's like, you send me your music. I I love to spin it. Um, I always look at everybody's bio if they send me one. If they don't, I I do go and look them up. Um, Just because I, you know, I like to share a little bit more than just the song. So if I can say they're from Sweden, they're from Germany, they're from here, they're from, you know, it's, it's, uh, whatever it is. I, 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 I hope that helps because I just, it gives it a little bit more of a more friendly right. feeling. I mean, well, you know, we, we, Kelly Collette, you know, I sent him your way, you, you know, yeah. it's again, word of mouth. Yeah. It's networking Yeah, is what it's all about. A- absolutely. And and that's great advice. And I was, you know, that would have been a question, but you answered already about what's a good tip to give to an, a new artist. Um, and again, just get out there and network. And it's not, that's with any entrepreneur, any indie artist, just get out there and network. All right. Well, I can't wait to ask you this next question because <laughs> you're always doing something. And I need to know what's next for Asphalt Jungle. Um, and I hear through the grapevine. There's some great things happening. Yeah. Um, the uh, first um, Miss Hyde from the wild side over there in England, you know, does yep. what you do. Um, we're getting together with a partnership uh, to do a song. Um, uh, I'm, I'm going to leave that teaser. Not even going to say what it is. Uh, we are, we are, we are looking to get other uh, independent artists out there to help us with this thing, but it's going to be a, us making awareness of bullying and things like that. That is just so fantastic. Yeah. And then, um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, plan is mid, midsummer, maybe late summer. Um, I got a five or six song EP coming out of all originals, uh, is titled destination unknown. Um, there will be a guest on there who she is my, I love her to death. Uh, you know her, uh, cause you found her song from me, uh, Sarah and the others. Oh my God. Oh my Sarah God. did. Yeah. Sarah did a song for me that I wrote over 30 years ago so and it's, it's, oh, it's, oh, she's amazing. Uh, and 
she did a song for me because I, 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 I just, my voice wasn't right for it. And I've always known that this song was, I think is great uh, because it can cross, it can cross over into country rock and be Southern rock at the same time. So cool. And she just nailed it. And I, every, I think everybody's going to fall in love with this song. I, I really wait. do. Yep. <laughs> It's just amazing. Oh, my gosh. Uh, that is just amazing, both the, the EP and then the uh, the, the single. is a single with uh, for the bullying, bullying because it, it's such a thing. Um, I, I don't know who knows or doesn't know, but I work for an alternative school in the, in the – for that darn day job. Um, and that – the kids – and it happens, and it's it's terrible. It shouldn't happen. Mm-hmm. It just shouldn't, mm-hmm. you know. And uh, so good exactly. for you. Exactly. Yeah, that's that's amazing. Yep. But um, yeah, she reached out. Candy reached out to me, and I jumped on right away. I was like, "Yeah, I'll be a part of this." You know. Yeah. So I'm telling you, these kids these days are just um, they're they're out of control. To be honest with you, so many of them. Um, mm-hmm. it, it's kind of like this generation coming up is is a little scary. But anyway, that's for another show. <laughs> Right. <laughs> you gotta sometimes reel me back in and like, oh wait, uh, what am I? <laughs> oh my gosh, C. Stevens, you are amazing. I am so excited to have you here on halfway through the week with me, and I am, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I am so excited to be able to share America. I am looking forward to the release on Friday, everybody. If you haven't pre-saved it, go find Asphalt Jungle, please. Uh, like him, comment, share him. Uh, go find him wherever he's all over. So he, it's not hard to f- just just Google him. You will find him um, and, and be on the outlook for all the new projects coming up. And uh, C. Stevens, is there anything else you want to share with everybody that I haven't we haven't touched on? No, you've done a great job. <laughs> it's been it's been a blast. It oh. has been a blast. Oh my gosh, it certainly is. This has been great. I mean, we were talking about leading up to today. It's been like, oh my god, it's here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, C. Stevens, don't go anywhere, everybody. I am so happy to share with you America, Asphalt Jungle.
Hey folks, this is big records recording artist Michael Bate from the Michael Bate Band, and you are listening to my music right here on Halfway Through the Week with Deb LaMotta. And it is halfway through the week, and I am Deb LaMotta. It is 9.09, and I hope you all enjoyed the interview with C. Stevens' Asphalt Jungle because we certainly enjoyed it. <laughs> Absolutely 100%. I am so happy for him, excited for him. America coming out on releasing on Friday, March 15th. If you haven't done it already, please go pre-save it. Go find Asphalt Jungle, and that's A-S-H fault f-a-u-l-t uh on wherever you are on social media instagram facebook like him comment share him uh he's he's a great guy and again uh, i i thank all the indie artists that uh i have met got to talk with and get to talk about their new releases have a new release are you listening tonight for the first time uh email me at info at r2rb or find me on facebook at r2r broadcasting um i'm also on instagram r2r broadcasting i'd be i'd be happy um as you as you heard um we had a great time talking with uh, c stevens tonight and uh, america and his new projects coming up so i'm very excited for him and to look forward to uh, leading up to whenever the release is coming out for his two projects. Don't don't you worry. I will have all that information when it is it is uh, ready to be put out there. Um, C. Stevens will definitely let me know. Okay, so what else? Uh, P. Mad Paul Dillon over in Ireland. That was fire. He is um, what a great guy. Uh, he had sent me his music way back when, and that's how we connect it. He is now doing a radio show, The Best of Irish Indie, on Saturday over in Ireland. And then we rebroadcast on Sunday afternoon before half, uh, Out of the Attic Live from Delaware. Delaware. His show starts at 3.30, and then my show starts at 7. So if you have a chance, go find P. Mad. Great, great um, indie artist, and I have enjoyed listening to his music and I get to listen to all the Irish indie that he uh, plays on his show. All right, so I will be back. I'm going to finish up with some great music. Uh, this one is Red Rocket by Bone, and that's B-O-N-E, and that's the two dots on top of that O there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, got to go find them too. I'll be back. Asphalt Jungle, thank you so much.
You're listening to Halfway Through the Week, right here on R2RB.com. That's right, and we are winding down halfway through the week. I hope everybody again enjoyed my special guest tonight, C. Stevens of Asphalt Jungle. I certainly did. Great time talking with Asphalt Jungle. His new release coming out on Friday, March 15th. Please find it, pre-save it, like it, share it. Uh, find Asphalt Jungle, like that, comment and share. And uh, again, pre-save uh, Amer- America if you, if, when you get a chance. Um, the music I just uh, spun was um, Built to Kill and Under the Den, Drunk and Lonely. And uh, again, uh, then let me just go back to the beginning. If you have a chance to go check out uh, one of my uh, favorite organizations, which is Second Chance Ranch in Felton, Delaware. Uh, if you have, um, um, if you can, uh, there's a project coming up, donate, uh, from the website. I'll be posting my fundraiser for my birthday. That's right. It's my birthday coming up in April. And of course, um, I spoke of Sintel. Please go find, <clears throat> excuse me, find my post on Facebook at, uh, R2R Broadcasting. Uh, Sintel has a fundraiser, GoFundMe, um, link on my what excuse me on my page i'm losing my voice tonight um as we all all know things happen and if you have a chance to go donate to centel that would be awesome again as i said the indie artists the support that is in that community for each other is unbelievable so there is a brother in need if you have a chance please go find my post i'll be posting more um probably tomorrow uh, you can find the link uh, on the post that i that i did do for them so please go check them out and everybody have a great night i did thoroughly enjoy the music tonight. Uh, I enjoyed the show, and uh, everybody have a great week. You can catch me Sunday night at uh, Out of the Attic, live from Delaware. And what do I got going on this Sunday? Oh, yes, I have another great uh, indie artist joining me um, to talk about uh, one of her upcoming events. So tune in. I have lots of great stuff happening. Everybody have a great night. I am going to spin another Asphalt Jungle song to take us out for the night. And I will see you, or I won't see you, but I'll talk to you all next week. Have a good one. Peace out.
Hi, I'm Mark Johnston, and you're listening to R2RB Real to Real Broadcasting. <laughs> 